Now, instantaneous is just slightly different, but very similar. So we're given a specific time, and what we want to do is the slope of the tangent on the concentration graph. So for this question, per se, the question was saying at this exact time right here, I'm trying to do it in purple, there it is, so it shows up. It's saying what was the concentration of our hydrogen peroxide. So you don't have two points, but you still do the same thing. You draw your, uh, you draw your tangent line in, it's going to be the hypotenuse, and then you find your values for your rises and your runs, and you go from there. And I just drew it freehand, so you forgive me for that. So instantaneous rate of reaction. So let's uh, get the instantaneous rate of reaction of oxygen at five seconds. Here is our balanced equation, and here is our graph. So we're just after oxygen in this example. So first thing I want to do is it's at five seconds. So at five seconds, which is about right here at the green line. Okay, there's about five seconds. We'll draw our tangent line in, make it as long as you want, do the best you can. And then it's about getting your values here. So, you know, we're at, uh, you know, 0.1 and zero, and then you can kind of get these values here. And I've sort of just gone ahead. So much time is elapsing. It looks like we got about 10 seconds elapsing, give or take. And uh, in terms of figuring out this value for concentration, go ha across, it's about 0 0.15. So using the 10 and the 0 0.15, all you need to do is you say, again, it's our X over our Y's. So there is my Y1, or sorry, there's my Y2, and there's my Y1. Again, that value and that value. And then we've got about 10 and zero going on here. So those are those two values. And then there's your concentration for that. So again, it's just a matter of doing the slope. Uh, here's another example. This one's sort of already developed here. So if we look at the red triangle, again, we've got our instantaneous point right here. And so what we need to do is we need to find how much time had elapsed, which happens to also be 10 seconds. And then we need to figure out our concentrations. So it's just a matter of kind of going across and figuring out what the values are going to be at those endpoints. And then there is a calculation I sort of drew over it there. Uh, and then down to the green triangle, the same thing we've got going on. We've got an instantaneous point of, um, looks like it's right here. So again, we had our values figured out. And you can double check those if you don't believe me. So again, your triangle was drawn and you go ahead and you get your, uh, you get your time and you get your concentration and then you're just plugging in and into that equation. So there's just another example of how to do it for the instantaneous. There's a final way of doing this, and that's using the balanced equation. So here is your balanced equation. Now, this is going to look a little funny at first, but don't be intimidated. So again, a is a, the, the, the lowercase is just standing for your coefficients. So if you want to figure out the rate, now again, we need, we're going to have some pluses and minuses because we've got some reactants, right? So these reactants are going to be decreasing, and the products are going to be increasing as a reaction. So the first thing you want to do is, for your a, You'll notice that we put the coefficient on the bottom and whatever your values are going to be a concentration number you can put in there and there is a minus sign and the minus sign is because it's a reactant and it's decreasing and you can compare that to b and it'll be exactly the same again b is a reactant again we have our minus again we have our coefficient here and you can compare that to c and d and the only difference between the c and d is that they are positive because they're increasing as this reaction continues so that's what it kind of looks like. Now we can put this into an example. And again, you can compare any of these you want when you're doing a question. So let's consider the following reaction. We've got uh, dinitrogen uh, pentaoxide there, and it's creating nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. So there's two ways to represent this reaction. In terms of the disappearance of the, nit of the uh, reactant, right? This one disappearing, or in terms of the production of the nitrogen or even in terms of the production of the oxygen. So those would be uh, increasing. So there is our balanced equation. So let's uh, let's sort of set this up. So for every one mole of O2, again, notice there's a one in front, uh, we've got four moles of o, uh, NO2 are being produced. Okay, so we could compare those. So this means the rate of production is four times that of the oxygen, right? Because there's a four in front of the nitrogen dioxide. Uh, therefore, the rate production of O2 is one quarter the rate of production of NO2. So you can express this rate as the following. 
And if you wanted to express it the other way around, you'd, of course, have a different ratio. And don't forget that this is there's all positives in here because we are producing something. Now we can look at the flip side here with our reactant. So we've got one mole of O2 produced from two moles of the, uh, the N2O5. Okay, comparing those, you see it's half. And then that's going to be our relationship. So you'll notice that we have a negative sign here because the reactant is what we're talking about. That's what we're comparing. And uh, it's going down. So one, okay, so notice the expression involving the NO2 reactant has a negative. This is essentially what I was just kind of explaining here. You got your changing concentration as your final minus your initial. And uh, by convention, we're after a positive value. So you just, you got it in the end, and it's saying multiply by negative one here. And that's kind of what we did on the earlier slide. Bottom line is all your answers need to be positive. So do what you need to do to make a positive in the end. Take a negative, make it positive. And those are the two we were, we were talking about, right? Okay, so here's finally a question based on the same equation. And it is, it is saying at 90 seconds. Now, the 90 seconds is kind of redundant information because we're just looking about the rates uh, at, at that 90 seconds. So firstly, we want to determine the rate of the appearance of O2. And we want to determine the rate of disappearance of the N2O5. So we can kind of use those rates that we just came up with in the previous question. There's our balanced equation. Move that to the top. So one mole, one to four is our ratio. So that's what we're gonna use when we actually come up with this rate. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna say the rate of production of the O2 is equal to that uh, one quarter and multiplied by um, that value that was given in the question. And there you go, that is your answer. So it's just using these fractions or perhaps, perhaps the fractions and not necessarily a fraction, it could be a whole number, all depends. So for the last one here, we've got uh, four moles of the NO2 produced for every two moles of the uh, N2O that's decomposing. And so this is a rate we can just, we can simplify a little bit. So it's, it's two over four or a half. So we, if we wanna find the formation of this one, there's your, uh, there's your one half. And again, there's your value in the question because it's at 90 seconds. And there would be your answer. Notice no negatives involved here. It is all positive stuff.